So in the previous video, we talked about how our defense system is divided into the external defense system and also the internal ones. And for the internal defense system, I told you that it involves the immune system and one aspect of your immune system is the white blood cells. In some books, white blood cells will also be referred to as leukocytes. You can use both those terms interchangeably in the exam, but I would prefer you to just refer to them as white blood cells. It's easier, by the way. Um, and white blood cells for A-levels, we will be looking at the two groups of white blood cells, which are known as phagocytes and lymphocytes. Now, for this particular video, we are going to be focusing on phagocytes. I always tell my students that uh, if you want to imagine phagocytes, just imagine Pac-Man. Because what does Pac-Man do? Pac-Man just, they'll just, you know, <laughs> they'll just eat up um, whatever, right? Um, so phagocytes are just referred to as the Pac-Man of your immune system because their function is just to eat things up. Now, for our level, for A-levels, we have to know a little bit uh, well, you don't, you don't have to um, know the formation of phagocytes, but I do want to talk about it a little bit. Um, phagocytes are actually formed in our bone marrow, which is the insides of our bone. The reason is because the inside of our bone is full of blood stem cells. Now, if you remember in chapter 5, I told you before that stem cells are just cells that can continuously divide and also differentiate or specialize to become specialized cells. In this case, as you can see, the blood stem cell is dividing to become two, and one of the blood stem cell will specialize and become something known as a neutrophil, whereas another blood stem cell will differentiate to become something known as monocyte, and there is another blood stem cell remaining over there, which can continue to divide anyway. Now, so as you can see here, this is how phagocytes are formed. If you are wondering, where are the phagocytes? The neutrophil and monocytes are the two types of phagocytes that you have to know for A levels. Now, what happens to the neutrophil and monocytes? These two cells generally will remain inside the blood, okay? Uh, but what can happen here is the monocytes can leave the blood vessels and when they leave the blood vessels, they will settle in the tissue space. They will remain in those tissue spaces. Tissue space means the space outside the blood vessel. They can be in between liver cells. They can be in your airway system, uh, also in your alveoli. So they will remain outside the blood and that's a good thing. Yes, I know... They are, uh, you might be thinking, but if they are out of the blood, can we still call them white blood cells? You can still refer to them as white blood cells. It's okay. And when the monocytes leave the blood vessels, they will develop to become these different types of white blood cells known as macrophage. And the macrophage is a type of white blood cell that remains in the tissue space. So in the exam, if the question asks you, list out two types of phagocytes, you can just say neutrophils and monocytes or neutrophils and macrophages. That is fine. Both answers are accepted. Uh, but one answer has to be neutrophil, but the second answer can be either monocyte or macrophage. So as you can see on the left here, both these neutrophils and macrophage, they are phagocytes. But of course, their shape looks a bit different. Um, their size also looks a little bit different as well. The macrophage is generally larger than the neutrophil. So if both of them are phagocytes, what are their similarities and what are their differences? So without wasting time, let's look at their similarities then. Now, the similarity between macrophage and neutrophil is as follows. Both of them carry out a process known as phagocytosis. Remember, a revision in chapter 4, phagocytosis is a type of endocytosis wherein it engulfs solid substances and this process requires ATP, as I'm showing you right here. This is what we did in chapter 4. Now, so... I'm drawing out a cell here. Now, this cell can be either a neutrophil or macrophage. I don't care. 
But the important thing I want you to know is inside the cell cytoplasm, they will have a lot of lysosomes. Chapter 1 revision. What is a lysosome? Lysosome is a type of organelle which is a single membraned vesicle containing digestive or hydrolytic enzymes. Something very important that you have to remember is lysosomes are produced by the Golgi body. So sometimes a question may ask you, um, why do neutrophils and macrophage have a lot of Golgi body? The reason why they have a lot of Golgi body is because the Golgi body is required to synthesize a lot of lysosomes. See, we are linking chapter 11 back to chapter 1. So you can't run away from the chapters that you have learned a long time ago. And I'm also putting a link at the top right corner so that you can go back and revise lysosomes as well. Now, so uh, what exactly do neutrophils and macrophages do? The first thing they do is when they are near a pathogen, they will recognize the pathogen as something called foreign or non-self. Remember, how do they do that? How do neutrophils or macrophages know that the pathogen does not belong in the body is due to the presence of antigens. What are antigens? Antigens are just membrane proteins or glycoproteins or glycolipids on the pathogen that is deemed or distinguished as foreign or different. So in this case here, look at the glycoprotein on the phagocyte the white blood cell, and then look at the glycoprotein on the pathogen. The phagocyte goes, hey, you're different. And the pathogen's like, uh-oh, I'm dead. <laughs> okay? so, um, so what exactly does the phagocyte do in this case? So the phagocyte's like, okay, so there is something foreign in our body. We have to mount an immune response. So how exactly do neutrophils or macrophages respond to pathogen? Both of them technically respond to the pathogen the same way. Remember, we are doing similarities between them. So the neutrophil or macrophage, their cell surface membrane will fold inwards and the pathogen is now sucked inside. And once it's inside the neutrophil or macrophage, it forms something called a vacuum or vesicle. Some books will refer to it as something known as the phagocytic vacuole. You can call it the phagocytic vacuole or the phagocytic vesicle, uh, where it, the vacuole or vesicle contains the pathogen that has been engulfed by phagocytosis. But that's not good enough. What happens over here? Look at the lysosomes. I'm zooming in over here. The membrane of the lysosome will fuse with the membrane of the phagocytic vacuole. And what happens is the enzymes inside those lysosomes will now go and attack the pathogens. And when they attack the pathogens, the pathogens are broken down by those hydrolytic enzymes. As an example, one of the hydrolytic enzymes is a protease enzyme, and the protease enzymes will digest the proteins in the pathogen, and the pathogen is dead. So that is how phagocytes eat and digest something. So the pathogen is broken down in this case. So whether it's neutrophils or macrophage, both of them will do the same thing, which is they will carry out phagocytosis. So then comes the more important question. If this is their similarity, what are their differences? Their differences here are as follows. Neutrophils are usually short-lasting phagocytes. What does it mean by short-lasting? It means that after engulfing and ingesting a few pathogens, and after they digest a few pathogens, the neutrophils themselves will die off. Okay, They don't survive in your body for a very long time. That's not a bad thing. Now, you might be thinking, oh my God, my neutrophils are dying very quickly. You don't have to worry because, you know, your stem cells can produce new neutrophils constantly. So you're, you're good. Okay, you're fine. Don't worry about it. However, macrophages are longer lasting because they can engulf, ingest, and digest 
a lot of pathogens and they can remain alive. You don't have to go into the reason of this, but one of the main reasons is because the macrophages will actually have a lot of lysosomes to be used and they also have a, a very high ATP ATP production capability. Uh, because macrophages are quite large, they have a lot of mitochondria, so they can produce more ATP uh, efficiently, so they remain alive for a longer period of time. You don't have to know the reasons why neutrophils are short-lasting and macrophages are longer-lasting, though. Don't worry about that. But the second more important differences between these two phagocytes uh, is the fact that neutrophils do not carry out antigen presentation, whereas macrophages carry out antigen presentation. So then, of course, you might be thinking, oh, what exactly is antigen presentation? Sounds so fancy. So antigen presentation is as follows. Before we look at macrophages, let's look at neutrophils. See, the neutrophil over here, it will look at the pathogen. The pathogen is the green color thing. And on the surface of the pathogen, it has antigens. What exactly are antigens, by the way? Antigens are just things which are distinguished as some foreign substances, foreign membrane proteins, foreign glycoproteins, foreign glycolipids, etc., etc., etc. So uh, the neutrophils will ingest the pathogen and it will use its lysosomes to digest every part of the pathogen. Everything is destroyed. But the macrophages do something a little bit different. They will engulf and ingest the pathogen and the lysosomes will break down the pathogens, but the antigens, look at the antigens, uh, they are not broken down. In fact, the antigens are still intact. And what the uh, macrophages will do is, they'll put the antigens on their own cell surface membrane. Now you might be thinking, wait, why would the macrophage do something as silly as that? Isn't that dangerous? Um, no, this is actually quite important. Uh, the reason why macrophages do antigen presentation uh, is because it involves lymphocytes, helper T lymphocytes uh, to be specific. We will talk about the reasons later. But for now, the purpose of this part of the video is just to show you the differences between the two phagocytes, uh, neutrophils and macrophages. Um, where neutrophils are short-lasting, macrophages are longer-lasting, Neutrophils do not carry out antigen presentation, whereas macrophages do carry out antigen presentation, wherein they will actually put the antigens on their cell surface membrane. But of course, there are similarities. They both carry out phagocytosis. So this is what we have to know about phagocytes in general.